Deputy President. On Monday, we marked Equal Pay Day in Australia, and that's the date past the end of the financial year that women, on average, have had to work to earn the same amount as men. An extra two months more work, in fact. Australian women in full-time work are paid, on average, $251 per week less than men. This is averaged out across the entire workforce, but even when women do the exact same job as a man, they are often paid less. And the more the job pays, the bigger the gap. And it's not because women uh, work in low-paying low industries or are less productive or less successful at bargaining. Major drivers of the gender pay gap are discrimination against women, where employers prefer to hire men rather than women, are more likely to reject equally qualified women or offer women less money. Another, re another reason is that jobs in professions predominantly staffed by women are poorly valued and poorly paid. And when most employees in an industry are men, in contrast, the work tends to be considered more valuable and is compensated accordingly. <clears throat> women make up the bulk of employees in, in undervalued feminised industries like childcare, nursing and teaching. And women are also more likely to be working in casual or part-time positions than men. And the penalty rates cut that was supported by this government targets retail and hospitality workers, the majority of whom are women. Full-time working women, Australian women, spend on average 25 hours doing housework per week compared to men's 15 hours doing housework. And this unequal burden on women limits their workplace participation. The gender pay gap also can't be explained away by women taking time to raise children. It exists from the moment women enter the workforce. A woman will earn 4 per cent less than a man in her first graduate job. And as her career progresses, the gap will increase to almost 20 per cent by the time she retires. And less pay over the course of a career also means less superannuation. And on average, women retire with almost half the superannuation of men. This can be as much as $700,000 less than men over the course of a career. And this is directly responsible for the increasing poverty for far too many older women. There's a spike in the number of older women experiencing homelessness that's associated with this, with women over 55 the fastest growing group of homeless Australians. So what can we do about it? In Australia, we've got different sets of rules in different workplaces when it comes to talking about your pay. And in the private sector, it's common practice for contracts to include gag clauses that prevent workers from discussing their pay with other workers. And we know that where pay is kept secret, the gender pay gap is even worse. In the public sector, the gender pay gap is 12.2 per cent compared with 21.3 per cent in the private sector. The, the Greens have got a bill before Parliament to remove these gag clauses. The government says there's no place for gender discrimination in our society, yet one in five women lose their jobs on maternity leave or on returning to work. To, to achieve equality in the workplace, we must also encourage men to do more domestic and family labour, which requires workplaces to allow family-friendly practices for both mothers and fathers. <laughs> and this is good for families and for fathers. Fathers deserve to spend time with their children. In Australia, men are only granted two weeks paternity leave, and most don't take it. The Greens also have a plan for affordable childcare, including building new community childcare centres and boosting assistance for families who need it most. These are the sort of measures that are required. We support a fair paid parental leave scheme with six months paid work, paid leave for the primary carer, up from the current allowance of 18 weeks. And the Greens' better life Work, better work-life balance bill expands the right to request flexible working hours. We can also fight for better pay in feminised industries like nursing and childcare and work to reverse the callous cuts to penalty rates. 
The gender pay gap is not just how things are. It's not inevitable. Countries like Iceland have recently made it illegal to pay women less, and we can do that in Australia too. We must continue to fight sexism in all of its forms and ensure that the work of women is valued equally as men's.